Hi, I'm Paul with DIY Automate. This time we are going to cover Home Assistant groups and views. But before we do, if you haven't already seen our other beginner videos in this series, uh, configuration.yaml, components, and entities, you might want to check those out first. We're going to pick up right from where they left off. So let's go pick them up. One of the things I truly believe is that for the average home automation hobbyist, it's as much about unified interfaces as it is about automation. In other words, it's about being able to control your lights, your music, your TV, your whatever you have um, and get information such as your temperature and your humidity and um, who's in and who's out of the house all in one unified interface one in in home auto, in home assistance standpoint one web page so that's where we're starting this is going to be a much bigger project as we go we're going to start bringing in things like mqtt servers and things like that but that's in the future right now we are going to learn about cleaning up that unified interface a little bit using groups and views and entities and we covered entities last time. So if you didn't see that video or you're unsure about entities, go back and look at that. Um, we also renamed some things. We're gonna do more of that today. We're gonna clean up the whole interface. We're gonna make it look pretty. I have Sono speakers and I have Hue lighting. So that's what we're gonna do. You may have some other things um, that you wanna do and that should be okay. The principles are pretty much the same, exactly the same. We also did weather underground reporting last time. So we're gonna clean all that up and make that pretty as well. We started to do that last time. Okay, so let's get started. So here's where we left off. We went and we renamed one of the Weather Underground entities. Uh, we added the Weather Underground pieces. So we're, we're sort of in exactly where we were before. And what that translates to is a configuration.yaml file uh, that looks like this. And so that's where we're gonna start. And two things I want you to notice about the website, uh, the Home Assistant interface here. One is all of these are badges because they're not in groups right now. So anything not in a group really sort of bubbles up to the top like that, most things. The other thing is there, there's this panel, this welcome home panel, and it's useful when you're just getting started. Uh, it'll bring you to your configurations and available components and sort of give you a place to jump off from. But as we move forward, we, we're not gonna want that. So let's go do a couple of things. Let's change the entities. And again, the entity, excuse me, IDs for the uh, weather underground pieces are here. The sensor PWS feels like Fahrenheit, PWS elevation. Those all map to the entities here, PWS, dew point. So we're gonna rename those entities and we are going to get rid of this panel. And it's a fairly easy thing to do. So to rename the entities, remember, is under Customize. We just keep going there. Um, I did that really quickly, but you can see what we did and everything is now lined up right. So all of the sensors are there. Uh, and then the friendly names that we want, I actually hit a couple. So you can see the hidden equals true. We'll actually just remove them, but not get rid of them out of Home Assistant, but just make them so that we don't see them there. Uh, so the, the next thing is that that panel, that welcome home panel, and that's in that is the the introduction component. So all we need to do is go ahead and comment that out. Now that component won't load, and we won't see it. So I, I know I did that really fast, but we covered entities and how to rename them and everything last time. So I don't wanna spend a lot of your time here. Uh, go ahead and save that off. And just like we always do, we'll go ahead and we will check the config, make sure we didn't make any mistakes in the copy over, leave out any colons, misspell something, all of that. Once we do that, we will go ahead and restart the service. Again, you can, there's a ton of different ways to do some of this stuff. I always restart the service. You could reload the configuration. Uh, you can do that right from the website. There's there's a bunch of different ways. I just find this easier to keep this this uh, terminal up and just be able to hit a couple buttons and do it really quick. So as that is going, sometimes it takes it a second to reload. We'll, we'll give it a second. All right, there we go. So you can see, 
here we have our renamed entities and that welcome home panel is is missing so as we go through things we need to next create a group and all a group is it's exactly what it sounds like it might be it is a grouping of entities that we can control as a single unit but we will still have control of each individual entity within the group and the easiest way to see this is just to go ahead and and make one so let's go ahead and make one right now and to do that we just go to the uh, the configuration.yaml file and we are we're going to create a new uh, component and remember components are less ju left justified and this component is named group so group and um, we're actually going to name the group main living room lights so every group will have a unique identifier main living room lights it's and that will become its entity name it'll be group dot main living room lights and then we're going to give it sort of a friendly name it's just called a name within the group living area lights and then we are going to take our entity ids and decide what we want in that group and again so light dot kitchen table and light over couch all we did is we went into the developer tools under states and found the lights that we want so lights uh, kitchen table lights over couch right so we just copied those over into here right so that's our first group so let's go ahead and make sure that 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 works the way we want it to we'll save the file and then make sure it works the way we want it to by checking the config that'll take it a second and then we will go ahead and restart the service and what should happen here is home assistant will take those things and group them into a panel for us and what a panel is is just this where the lights is it's it's a it's a square that sort of holds everything uh, and we will see if it's there and it'll make a little bit more sense to you give it a second all right so now you see living area lights if it is a a group that's only a bunch of switches it will give you a master switch to sort of control them all at once right so you can control them as a group and that becomes important later because we're going to want to control groups through automation Right. We haven't gotten to autom the actual automation yet. In other words, if you know this time, if it's 8 p.m., turn on or off lights or, or whatever, um, we will get there. Right. But you can also control the individual lights within the group, the individual entities within the group, and the entity um, configurations. You know, for for a hue light, this is what it looks like. It'll be different for different entities. You can change the color, the brightness, all of that. So you don't lose any of the functionality by putting in a light. You can see this actually will get a little bit um, a little bit nice for us to be able to sort of take things and not just have huge lists of everything. You also notice the kitchen table and over couch are now missing from this other default group, right? So as we move things into the default group, out of the default group, they'll they'll disappear from there. Um, we can you know we can reuse entities in as many groups as we want though. So the next thing we're going to do is create a view. So a view is uh, is basically a group, but it's promoted to be a tab. So a view is basically a group of groups that are stored within a tab. And I know that may sound confusing, but so let's go ahead and just make one. And to do that, we go back into our configuration.yaml file. And again, I just said a group is a group of groups, right? So um, we can go ahead and under the group component, create our view. So main living room view, again, that's going to be its entity name, right? We're gonna give it a name and this one's gonna be living room. And here's the keyword, view equals yes. If you don't have that view equals yes, it's gonna be a normal group just like we just saw, just like this lights area group right here, okay? Um, and then entities, and it's the entities that we want to add to this view. And it can be individual entities, but it can also be groups. So in this case, we made this group, right? Live, main living room lights, main living room lights, and it's a group and we can find that in our entity IDs, group main living room lights. All right, so we have all that. Let's go ahead and save that out. Make sure that the config is good. Again, that always takes a minute. and then we will go ahead and restart the service. 
And once the service is restarted, we go back to the interface, states, and now you can see up top, there's a living room that has our group in it and loft, which is sort of the default group, right? And the default group is something that we don't have to, um, that we didn't create. It's just created by default. We will create a different default group and we'll do that in just a second. But first, let's go through and take the entities that are part of Weather Underground and add them to a new view that is just our weather view. All right, so let's go back to our, our configuration.yaml file. We're gonna create a new group and that is going to be, um, let's just call it main weather group. And you want these groups to be a little descriptive because um, we'll just call it main, main weather because it's going to be harder as we grow and, and you could get a lot of these uh, they'll be hard for you to parse out in your mind as you're sort of trying to tweak and find everything it'll just add time to your configuration woes um, so okay so let's go and whoops and give it a name and we're going to call it weather we're going to make it a view yes and then we are going to entities and enter. And then we need to give it all of the entities from the um, from the, the sensors for Weather Underground. And I'm just going to copy them from above, paste them in there, and then delete out um, all of the information I don't need. So by the magic of editing, it's all done. Um, and you can see, so sensor PWS alert comes from up here, sensor PWS alert. We actually don't need and can't use the colons in the end of all these. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those all off. Um, that would have showed up in our, when we, when we do our script check. But, so now you have a main weather group whose name is weather, who is a view, whose entities are here. And then the entities are going to get their names within the interface from up here, from their friendly names, right? Within the interface itself, because we've given them friendly names. So you have to keep, and keep track of where all these things are happening. But while we have that, we can go ahead and we can save out this configuration. And hopefully this will not give us any errors. If it does, we will deal with them. There we go. It's looking good. We're going to go ahead and restart the service. And once the service is restarted, we should be able to go back to our home assist interface, go to states, and you can see weather is there, right? And our little components are there. They're still here, but if we had done this in a group on this without making it its own view, these would actually migrate down. And we can go and do that really quickly. The easiest way to do that is to go back into our configuration.yaml file and just not have it be a view anymore. Easy enough. So let's go ahead and save that out. Uh, we'll go back and I'm going to break my, no, I'm not gonna break my own rules. Let's check the config, take it a second and then check and then restart our, whoops, restart our service. I'm going to go back to the web page and reload here. And you can see now the weather stuff has moved down from up here to here. Okay, easy enough. Uh, the one last thing I think that we'll do is, you know, because we're talking about making things look pretty or, you know, at least useful. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can actually change these icons. Right, and you can do that for almost anything. Uh, Home Assistant uses what is known as material design icons. Um, and you can actually find those at materialdesign.com. There's like actually a couple other websites, but that's the one that, that Home Assistant uses. And if you come and look at materialdesign.com, you'll see that there are all kinds of different icons that you can use. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna do a bunch of these, but we'll do a couple. Let's go and look at temp and see if there's one in here. We can search uh, for temperature. 
right? And there's a few different ones. So let's just say we want the Fahrenheit temperature. We just grab the name Fahrenheit temperature. Oops. It, copy that out. And then we will go back to our, uh, our configuration.yaml file, right? And up here in our customize, this is where we're gonna put this in our customize um, uh, component. So we're gonna find the sensor that we want that in. And let's just say it's heat index or feels like, let's just find the temperature, temp Fahrenheit, friendly name is temp, right? And then we can actually just type icon and then colon, MDI is material design icon. There's other ways to do this and you can, we'll do it later. You can actually upload your own photos and things like that. But for right now, we're gonna just use um, our, our material design icon, the way that we're doing it here. Hit, uh, paste in what the name that we used. Go ahead and save this. And here's one of those things and I did it by default. You don't actually need a space there. You need a space between the icon and the MDI, but between the MDI colon and the actual name of the icon, there is no space. Go ahead and save that. We'll go back here, check our config. Takes a second. And then reload our service. And then once our service is reloaded, we will come back to our, our Home Assistant webpage and reload that. Hopefully it's ready. And you can see that has changed to the Fahrenheit symbol that we made over there. Um, so we can do one more. Uh, let's actually change our kitchen table light to um, a material design icon, okay? So the easiest way to do that, again, go to material design icons, uh, dot com, and let's look for kitchen table. Uh, there's a ton of icons in here. Not everything you'll ever need, but most things that you'll need. We'll search on kitchen. Didn't find anything. All right, well, let's try a light. Okay, so we got different lights. Uh, let's just assume that we want, I don't know, we'll just do the flashlight just because. So we come here, we copy out flashlight, hit enter or copy. We go back to our, our configuration.yaml file. Up here under customize, light bedroom we'll just do that one because we have it but you would any light you want if we wanted to do light kitchen right let's actually do that just so you can make sure you see the whole the whole process here right we go in to home assistant we go find the kitchen light uh, it's going to be called light kitchen underscore table right so we go back to the configuration.yaml under customize and we do um, light dot kitchen underscore table. I don't think I already have that there. I don't, okay. And then we can do friendly name, friendly name, colon space, kitchen light. And then the material icon and then MDI. Remember the spacing here is a little bit different. Flashlight. And then we go ahead and save that. We'll do one more little round of checking our config. Give it a second. And then we will restart the service. Whoops, we have an error. So let's go and try to figure out what that is. While parsing block line three. Let's see if we can figure that out. and it's a spacing. See, we didn't line that spacing up there. I had that a little bit off and that stuff is very important when we do this. So let's go ahead and save that and see if that, that fixes it. Configuration line 45, could not find expected colon. Oh, one more thing I did wrong the colons. <laughs> so let's, so I had two things wrong there. 
Let's save it. And that's why I go through and do this, right, is check the config. Because I know that I'm going to make little mistakes, and it's easier for me to do this than to wait for the service to restart. Go to the web page, see if the web page loads. The web page doesn't load. Then go out and run the config dot, the check script, and then sort of go around and around like that. I think it's much easier to do this all up front. Um, now that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and restart the service. And then we'll bring up the web page here. Um, give me a second. And we'll go back to states. And you can see Kitchen Light now has the flashlight. There's one last thing I'm gonna cover in this beginner's piece, which is the default view. And then we'll come back in an intermediate piece and do some more advanced um, icon changing and all of this prettiness stuff. Um, but before I cover default views, if you want to take a second to subscribe or tell your friend, call your mother, I don't know, go right ahead and do that. Um, but let's talk about default views for a second. So a default view is basically the loft here is the default view. It's the first view you see when you come into the states page, right? So when you first load Home Assistant, you get the default view. I'm going to show you how to make the default view and then I'm going to change it back because I don't think we have enough stuff here to make a full-fledged default view. But I think if you have enough stuff and you're going through these videos, you might want to do this. So it's it's fairly easy. Just go ahead and, and go into your configuration.yaml file and under the groups, just change one of the group names to default view instead of you know whatever else we have. So. I'll do it here for the main weather view. I'm just going to go ahead and change def default underscore view colon, and then we can go ahead and save that off. Once that's saved off, we can go ahead and check our config. I know that gets a little monotonous, but I, I do think it's worth it. And then we'll go ahead and restart our service once that's done. Once the service is restarted, we can go back into Home Assistant and you can see our default view now is called Loft still, but it is just that view that we had before um, that had our weather information on it and this is where it would start. Uh, this is not something that you do right away. You need to get your views um, going. But if you did have you know, all of your lights, all of your speakers or, or you know, whatever you use the most in a view, this might be really useful. Rather than having the actual default view, which actually has everything and it's not as organized as you might want. So to change that back, it's pretty easy. You just go back into your configuration.yaml file and um, undo what we did. We'll put that to back to main weather. Go ahead and save it. Uh, restart the service. Check your config, restart your service, uh, and then we'll be done. So check the config and then restart the service once that's done. And then once once we're done with that, we move this out of the way, we'll reload. And now we are back to where we started, which is great. Um, as I've said, there, there's more advanced things that we can do. We'll cover that in intermediate videos. I think that's good for now. I hope it was informative and I hope you keep automating. Okay, goodbye.